Karen, thank you so much for taking the time. It's a pleasure uh, to be with you uh, today. And I think that uh, it is non-trivial that you could spare the time. Oh, I was um, delighted to be here with you. It's really good to see you again. And I'm glad to see that you're faring well in these awful times. It is, it is very challenging times for everyone, um, which is really, I think, um, the point in time where the world is desperately seeking new ways to confront this, I don't know, old new challenge of a raging mm -hmm. pandemic, right? And what I would like to ask first that in your unique experience and viewpoint, both in your current and your past roles, what innovative solutions could we expect that will potentially transform the way we tackle COVID-19? You know, um, my background is not only in medicine, but in public health, Ron, and, and being at, at Google in this historic time has been meaningful for me. I know having been through prior crises, public health crises, getting information to the public is one of your biggest challenges in any of these kind of events, especially authoritative, accurate information and directing people to what, what they need to do. Billions of people come to Google every day asking for information and COVID has not been an exception. So a big priority for us here has been to make sure that we're getting good, accurate information to people all over the globe about COVID-19, um, about the disease itself, about how it's transmitted, about where to go for health and assistance, pointing people to their local ministries of health, uh, to the World Health Organization or the CDC. So this has been a priority not only on the search surface, but also we've been able to lift up content on, on places like YouTube. And, and invite folks like Tony Fauci to be interviewed by influencers that will reach broad audiences and make it more engaging and entertaining so that people feel more empowered and have the agency to know what to do for themselves. So very um, pleased that we can be part of a, this sort of new way of communicating directly with the public in a pandemic. Uh, hopefully this will be the last pandemic where we need to leverage uh, these kind of resources so I have to say, I mean, the scale of what we're able to do when we put out a new message, whether it's about COVID or something related like mental health, we can reach so many people overnight. And it's, it's, it's been a great thing that we've been able to do. I think it's part of the bigger fabric of everybody's role in, in fighting the pandemic. Cool. So, so how's Google Health actually involved in making these potential avenues of innovation in practice materialize? Um, and um, what is the time horizon for some of these new ideas that you are planning to actually uh, be unveiled? So um, in context, I've been at the company now uh, just about, about eight months. And uh, Google Health, which is what I, the, the part of the company I joined is about, uh, it was about a year old when I arrived. And our focus was um, on improving uh, access to health information for users and for the people they trust. So how can we get um, health information organized in the way that search organizes information for the rest of the world um, on top of the electronic health record, or leverage uh, artificial intelligence or computer vision to accelerate diagnostics and, and imaging uh, work that happens in the clinical environment. But also how do we give consumers the information they need to take action around their health, whether it's learning about diabetes and getting care in those and um, finding sources of care in that environment. And I tell you that the sort of context with which I walked in the door here and what Google Health was thinking about, the pandemic accelerated a lot of that work for us. It was an, an accelerant use case is the way I think about it. And so though initially um, our, our clinical team that, that we were building out was going to be focused on those two uh, broad areas, the public health part of our work really uh, exploded. Uh, and we had been working then across the company in partnership with Search and Map and YouTube, uh, some, some of the parts that I mentioned, but it goes well beyond that, to consider an enterprise-wide approach to improving health and health information for people all around the world. So the, the work that we wanted to do inside of Google Health, we still do. We still believe and are still working on this idea that, that when the pandemic passes, that, that the, the same challenges we've always faced, that you need good information to make good decisions, whether you're the doctor or the patient. And um, we wanna help people navigate their health journey just as much as their care journey. So we'll, we were gonna continue all that work, but I'll give you a concrete example of, yes, of how please. it accelerated. And that is um, in the area of telehealth. Uh, the, the company has done some work in telehealth broadly, uh, including with cloud. Uh, one of the things that we worked on in Google Health was getting information to consumers about how to get um, virtual care uh, options 
in, in, in their area. So rather than if they were sick or if they had chronic disease needs, rather than having to worry about going in person, especially at the height of the pandemic, uh, they, they would be able to find resources uh, to, to have virtual care. And we not only made that a part of the search function, so when you're looking for care, it pops up the options, but we use that as an opportunity around price transparency to put up the pricing of the various options to start to give consumers a sense of, of, of how to make choices based on not just quality, but also tra trade-offs and the, the overall value. We had planned to do some of that work, um, but, but clearly you know, the, the interest in telehealth and the need for virtual care and COVID accelerated our, our work in that area and will continue that pathway. It's just an example of how the pandemic became an accelerant use case for the kinds of things that we wanted to do in Google Health. Cool. So I think that's a really cool example. Um, and actually, that's the exception that really begs the question about the rule. Uh, I myself had huge expectations about how AI, mm -hmm. once there's a big global challenge, AI will rise to the challenge and change everything. But when we look at the practice, uh, as compared to those expectations, we've seen such few tools implemented to date in terms of AI in practice in COVID-19. So why do you think this is the case? And, and can we change that in any way? I think uh, it's probably okay that we don't rush too much for two big reasons. One is the data in is still not all that clean. Uh, you're, you guys are well ahead and, and haven't harmonized um, really great data that's interoperable. So kudos there, but the rest of the world not quite in that place. So yeah, there, there's, a, there's a, an, a need to make sure that we have non-proprietary harmonized standards that can, can make it a more seamless uh, input. And then I think there's a, a really important challenge for those who are using AI to look at fairness and make, make certain that whatever we are building is not going to exacerbate inequities in care or health outcomes and um, really eliminate disparities. I think that's one of the most exciting potentials, frankly, for AI and, and the augmentation that it can bring to bear. I, I wonder, because of those uh, roles that you've taken in the past on the federal level and in decision makers level, I'd like to take the opportunity and ask you at this point, what pieces of advice would you give country leaders as they, they, they need to make such tough decisions now in short time and very little evidence around them to guide them? So, so you know, as a decision maker and as a leader, and what potential advice can you give at this time? I think the, the, the reality is that uh, the scale and scope of uh, building con consensus recommendations really falls to governmental entities to try to bring the smartest people and the best science together. And uh, we're, we're hungry for it uh, in, in, the, in the private sector. We want to inform it. We want to partner. We want to know how we can augment what's happening. Um, but I think that that, that role is, is really essential. And I don't think I, I understood that quite as well until I was on the other side. Um, working to make sure that we were making good decisions for our Googlers and how to keep them safe around the world um, and their families and be a part of you know, the, the necessary efforts to reduce, to reduce uh, contagion. I, mean, I think um, an example of how we've partnered with, with government is in public health. I think I mentioned the community mobility reports a minute ago that um, a lot of my public health colleagues um, and, and people in public health around the world were trying to understand the reaction to the social distancing, the, the shelter in place orders. And they would tell me stories uh, that did not seem surprising to me, having been in, in, in public health, that they would look out the window of their office to try to sort out whether people were still driving or walking and, and if they were staying home, which is a really inefficient, non-evidence-based way for them to make decisions. And so <laughs> that led us to develop this um, community mobility reports, which is a way to aggregate data in a way that we do for restaurant business um, and look at busyness in, in other sectors to inform them about whether they needed to press harder on the expectate the public health expectations or lighten up, but we wouldn't want to make those rules and we wouldn't want to, we as a company, you know, we just want to inform the process and partner with public health to augment um, any data that they, that they might need to have. So uh, I guess that's the second thing, Ron, which is partnership. I, I want, I, I, and, and, fr and frankly, um, I think the world's been doing honestly a really good job of collaboration and partnership. But I, 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 want, I want people to know that that public-private partnership is essential when you have the scale and scope of a problem like we have. But I also think that going forward, um, which I've always believed, that, that this is a collective action kind of thing. Everybody's in. Everybody's got a responsibility, and you bring the best tools to the table. Uh, I'm, uh, as you know, from uh, Louisiana, and uh, we, that's our gumbo approach, bring the best that you got to put it in the pot, and you come out with something really wonderful. And, and uh, I think we're seeing that in action in COVID. But 
I do want, want folks to know that um, everybody's got a role to play. That's, uh, that, that's really, I think, one of the key themes of this conference that repeats again and again is the need for collaboration between countries, within countries, between sectors, between the private sector and the public sector, actually between the security uh, sector and, and other sectors. It's all about collaboration at this time of need. So thank you for making another note of this at this point. Uh, the last question that I, I would like uh, kind of to inquire, and I know it's, it's sometimes difficult at the middle stream of this, this is far from being done, but I would like to still ask you, um, looking back the last six months, um, what has Google, Google Health in specific, done in this time period? One thing that you were most proud of, and one thing that you think you would have done differently if you'd given a chance to redo it again? Well, um, I have to say I'm, I'm really proud of what we've done. And I'll, I'll start from the beginning, which is um, thematically around getting information to consumers. Back in, in January, um, uh, we realized that we were moving, moving towards a pandemic and leveraged a tool that we have on the cert, on search, which is um, SOS, which is an alert that can drive people to uh, urgent information. We've used them for things like the tsunami, but we've never used one for um, an, a communicable disease outbreak. And it seemed clear that we needed to lift up really important authoritative information quickly. So we early, we very early stepped into wanting to make sure that we had good information out for the public and the, the uh, scrum, scramble, I don't know what's the right word, but that watching, you know, being relatively new to the company and watching these engineers and product managers and UX folks who didn't really even understand viral disease transmission quickly learn what, what it meant and how to, how to translate that into information that our users could could um, access was remarkable to see. I mean, they everybody just turned on a dime and, and, and tried to sort out where were all the places that people might look for information from us, what are all the surfaces, and how can we get, get that information out there? We did creative things that we haven't even done before, uh, crossing, and it, it's a long story to try to complain, but it's right to explain, but like there are things that, that YouTube always only does, ways that they only do banners, and they said, you know what, the world's in the historic time, we've got to get information out to people to save lives. And so really thinking about um, how we leverage the, the, the way, the certain services, the places people can look for information. I'm really proud of that. I'm just proud of everybody who like turned and said it, all hands on deck, and we were still in that mode. Um, we're thinking a lot about masks. We're thinking a lot about what's going to happen with vaccines and how we can really you know, continue that messaging. I'll say the second thing, which is about the company. And um, we decided very early to take a conservative approach to work from home. We did that. Uh, we, we wanted to be uh, not only for the Google protection, but to be a part of this social distancing, densification work. And so uh, very early we wanted to, to, because we can work from home, work from home, and we're taking a continued conservative approach there just to be a part of the, the bigger solution. Thank you so much, Karen, for this time. Thank you so much, Ron. It's great to see you. Stay safe. Everybody wash your hands, wear a mask, keep your distance.